I uh, am here with Richard Beck, and I am Karen Travis. I'm the chairwoman of the Group Foundation for Advancing Mental Health, and I am very happy that Richard Beck is receiving the Social Responsibility Award. And this award, um, Richard, is given by the Group Foundation for Advancing Mental Health. And the award was established to be given to an AGPA member or members who have um, provided exceptional acts of service for the community at large. And so congratulations on receiving this award. Thank you, my friend. I am, I'm truly honored and humbled to be given this award. Yeah. And well-deserved. So, Richard, I was wondering if you would tell us a little bit about your trauma work and your international um, training work that you do, because that's the reason you are being awarded this, this honor that you well deserve. Where to start? Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the trauma work that I've done was after 9-11. Mm -hmm in conjunction with AGPA and our organization's response uh, to the attack in New York City and in DC and I've helped to coordinate and respond to traumas around the country. Been in San Diego, been in Boston, you know when I was in Baton Rouge after Katrina. Yes, you were so generous to come and, and help us process that, that trauma. Well, AG, we, AGPA was very nimble, mm -hmm. and we shifted from a conference on ethics, and we knew how important it was, so we changed the paradigm to a conference on trauma, and we really cared for all of the caregivers mm -hmm. who were deeply affected, both personally and professionally, yeah. by doing this work. And internationally, I've done work in Sarajevo, as I was mentioning earlier when we were chatting. I was the only American. Um, leading groups and giving a lecture in Sarajevo. I've been in South Africa with NSGP. I've been in Belfast a few times with the Threshold Group and right, with right. Kathy Ullman and Cecil yes. Rice, may he rest in peace, and Pat Dougherty. Right. So, and I coordinated with Tom Stone. We were both co-chairs of the AGPA community outreach for a couple of years. And we developed an interest in care for the caregiver, which we presented on. And then for 10 years, I was chair of the, the international organizations, equivalent to the chair mm -hmm. of the Trauma Disaster Committee, and coordinated responses to disasters around the world, based really on my learning from the experiences that AGPA mm -hmm. offered me. In Columbia University, I have been teaching treatment of trauma and treatment of childhood sexual abuse for 12 times, 12 semesters, so. It's busy. The, yes, the list is endless. And I, I'm That's sure there are, yeah, I know there are many other things that you could tell us about. Right. So with that short list, yeah, short list, you, I hope that you know how much um, you deserve that award. And it, it's my honor to be here with you today. You, you let me know I was in I was in the Republic of Georgia, right, when and I you texted me. <laughs> and when I get texts, please call me. Given my family history, it's never a good thing. So I said, "Is everything okay?" Right. And you said, well, "I just want to let you know you, the recipient this year of the uh, Foundation for Advancement of Mental Health's Social Responsibility yeah. Award." And I'm yeah. like. Like right, really. right, right. And I'm like, why are you texting me back? It's in the middle of the I night tried there. To call right, it was like yeah. 11 o'clock yeah. at night yeah. in yeah. Tbilisi. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, also, I was, I was wondering if you could share with us what inspires you to do this work, which seems tirelessly, although I know you get tired. But what really inspires you? Tell you tr I'll tell you a story. I was having lunch with Molin Lesh. And he tells me, you know, my parents on their birth, well, on their birth announcement would like to introduce the son, our, the birth of our son, Dr. Molin Lesh, because it was already predetermined. Oh, and wow. the same thing with my parents. Mm -hmm. uh, here's our son, because both of my parents were Holocaust survivors, and right. I'm the only one okay. from my family born in this country. And just as Judy Herman talks about bearing witness, yeah. every Friday night I would see my mother um, lighting the candles and weeping 
for her sister who, who was gassed and killed. Mm -hmm. So the concept of bearing witness started very early on in my life without the formal education, but just the capacity to sit and listen. And you and I both believe that whatever someone has lived through, we can listen to. We Absolutely. might not be able to change what happened, mm -hmm. but we can really bear witness and listen to their experience, yes. which is how I've approached uh, groups like this and work mm -hmm. like this around the world, around the country. It's an incredibly inspiring story. Mm -hmm. I, I Thank you speak. for, it's very personal. Thank you for telling us that. So one more question for you. Mm -hmm. So I know you. I know you. You know me. I know you. We have the same birthday. <laughs> We've been friends a long time. <laughs> right. So I do know there is life outside of your professional work. So I know that you are an avid fisherman, mm -hmm. photographer, mm -hmm. and gourmet cook. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking about those three things and wondering that passion you have for your for your interest, your personal interest, does it have any connection to the passion of your professional work? Such a good question, Karen. Thank you. You're welcome. No, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's, the, it's the ability to play ah. in the midst of whatever horrible things I've lived through and listened to. It's the capacity of resilience and... I'm reminded of a young woman who was in my group in Sarajevo. And she was a child during the siege of Sarajevo. And there was no food, no electricity, no water. And she was a pianist. And she would play the piano at night by candlelight. Mm -hmm. And other musicians in the dark would be playing. And you could hear, she would describe hearing the symphony of hope and resiliency throughout yeah. a horrible time. Mm -hmm. So my passions of cooking and Photography. It's a way of look. It's a way of looking at things, a way of listening, just a way of being with people and letting things unfold in a mm -hmm. playful way. Yeah, and and sharing those hobbies. I mean, sharing fish that you catch, sharing I you some, didn't I? yes, sharing sharing your you know a meal that you cook, mm -hmm. and the beauty of looking at photography that you take. So people like my photographs. Mm -hmm. Richard, thank you so much for this opportunity to talk about this. And again, I really say congratulations. Coming from you, that means the world to me. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, Karen. You're welcome. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.